What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to carry over with intro to printer exploitation. So as you see today is today's video is hack the box video. So basically today we're doing return. Return is not a challenge, rather it is a complete machine. But the objective is to teach you how to exploit printers. All right, so jumping right off the bat with the part that matters the most. It is the part where we are faced with the printer. So we access the printer basically by accessing the IP address of the machine. And as you can see on port 80. Now you can do a map scan, you can discover all the ports, but mainly we are concerned with how to exploit this printer. So if we navigate through the different sections, we go to troubleshooting, it does nothing. We go to fax, it does nothing. We go to settings and we see a pre-filled form. Contrary to what we regularly see when we troubleshoot or when we print the swap sites, we see a form that's blank. But in this case, or in today's case, it is a pre-filled form. Now, apparently this form, uh, it's filled with uh, variables that's local to the machine. So here we have the server address, print return local, the server port, username and password. So it kind of sends an authentication request to this host name running on this port. So there is some service running on this port, okay? And these are the authentication credentials to interact with the service. Now, if you go back and do this, so maybe sudo nmap-p389, okay? And then let's take the port or the IP address of the machine. See if there's really something running on this port. Indeed, there is something running on this port, and it is the LDAP protocol as expected. LDAP is the protocol or the lightweight protocol for Active Directory communications. So this is so this means that the printer is running on a Windows machine. Okay, guys. So that's the first the takeaway here. All right. So now there is a pre-filled password. What you can do is you can try with with the Firefox developer tools to find out if you can find the plain text form of this pre-filled password. As you can see, it's pre-filled with asterisks, so you cannot find the password this way. All right. Apparently, this is the only entry uh, step or the entry point to the machine is by manipulating this form. So, so far, we couldn't find the password and we want to find out how to uh, maybe actually want to find out how to find the password. So we need to perform man in the middle or MITM attack. MITM attack is uh, an attack where you sit in the middle between the client, the person who sends the request and the server, the entity who receives the request. So technically it's a website, it's a visitor and a website and you are in the middle. You see the active packets being exchanged between the person or the client, the visitor, and the server. But in this case, it doesn't work like that. It's slightly different. Here, we're not, inter we're not intercepting communications between a visitor and a website. Rather, we are intercepting a packet that is getting sent from this website or this printer to this address on port 389. So apparently it's not going to be encrypted. So if we're able to intercept that, we can maybe get the password. But how to do that, knowing that we don't, we are not on the actual network here, right? We are not on the, we're not on this network. We cannot inter intercept this port. So if we can change this parameter, server address, and redirect the packets to come to my machine. So. If we go to the configuration of the IP address here, so if config and I take my IP address and supply it here, what's going to happen if I update the request? It's going to send the request to the IP address, my IP address. Now, if there is no validation on the packets, it's going to work. And it worked. So basically, if I show you here, guys, so that's what I did. So I started a listener on port 389. 
and I changed the server address to be my IP address and I clicked on update what happened it actually as expected sent a request to my IP address on port 389 since I'm listening on port 389 I will be able to receive the request and given that there is no validation for the user input it's going to send the request to whatever address you input here now what happened I received the username and the password as expected so this is the username return or literally it is svc-printer service account for the printer and this is the password what can we take away from here so we here we kind of right exploited a working mechanism on the printer so the printer here is communicating with the LDAP protocol this functionality is enabled on the printer okay and sometimes we need it on corporate environments but the thing here that made this happen is the fact that there is no validation on the user input so apparently or actually sorry additionally guys this interface would only be access to administrators only administrators can send these requests as a user of the printer you don't need to communicate with LDAP protocol by filling this form it should happen in the background by some sort of mechanism or function anyway that's why it worked okay so we have now the username and password so what do we use these where, where do we use these we use them basically in evil win rm now don't ask me why we can use nmap scan guys and scan for all the ports on the machine you're gonna find that evil win rm is running on the machine and you will use username and password to log in now be careful here guys note that the password contains two exclamation marks so when using the password in, in the evil win rm command use single quotes or double quotes doesn't matter when sending the password so when we use this command we get the first shell access so apparently we exploited the printer to get the shell access so again guys to repeat what happened there is uh, invalidation or the absence or lack of lack of validation on the user input on the printer that enabled us to communicate directly with LDAP protocol but on my machine or to redirect the request to hijack the request and instead of then sending the LDAP packet to the machine we sent the LDAP packet to my machine so kind of hijack the request because there is no validation on the user input simply all right so who am I let's see here as you can see we are the SVC printer so quickly we got the in map we got the user flag Okay, guys. Now the next step is to perform privileged escalation. Now here it doesn't have to do with the printer anymore. It has to do with Windows Active Directory privileged escalation. So as you can see, we list the current active privileges uh, attributed to the user. So as you can see, we have multiple privileges from which we can perform safe, effective privileged escalation. First, we have C load driver privilege. We have covered this before in hack the box fuse how to load a vulnerable driver and use that vulnerable driver to execute system commands that yield in um, privilege escalation so you can check out hack the box fuse i'm going to put the video uh, the, the link in the video description next oh we have this one c machine account privilege add workstations to domain now we haven't covered this before that's why it's going to be the method i'm going to follow in this scenario let's carry over to see what we can do see backup privilege backup files and directories we also covered this in the past videos so basically our multiple methods to escalate privileges starting from here let's see here so if we go to active directory and type c backup we have multiple methods as you can see using disk shadow method and powershell also by copying the sam and system hires basically since we have privileges over the backup uh, the backup privilege we can backup files dump files including the sam and the uh, password database in the windows system but we have covered this before let's now cover this one c machine account privilege now if we list the active groups here or the groups uh, that the current account is member of we can see several operators 
Now, also several operators as a group, it's not supposed to have members because it's a default group that comes in Active Directory. Members of this group can manipulate services and can create and restore backups. Now, if you want to manipulate with backups or play with backups, you can directly skip to using this method. But we are left with services. Now, server operators as a group that comes by default only in um, uh, do, uh, domain controllers. Now, you, regular user names or regular users should not be or are not supposed to be members of this group. Being a member of this group as a normal user means something wrong in the machine. So what we can do here, we can manipulate services. We can change the service binary and let the service uh, execute whatever binary we want. Netcut, MSF Venom, any sort of payload you want. So how to do that? All right. So let's see here, server operators. All right. So first, we have to list the groups. We have listed the groups. Now here we search for uh, the groups which the uh, server operator has the right access to. Apparently, we want a service which can be modified by the server operator group, right? And eventually the username we got access to. So we use this PowerShell command, but it doesn't work in this case. As you can see, I used the same PowerShell command, but it haven't yielded in the expected output. I also tried this one where we list the services that are running with system privileges. Again, it didn't work. So what I did, I resorted back to old school methods. So here I typed services to list the current services running. And as you can see, we have many services running on the machine. It means we have a large pool of choices to select from for um, changing the service binary path. But Pay attention to this. Privileges. We have to select the service that has the, the true as a value in the privileges column. So we can start with this one. We can start with this one. Also the SMS V host, the privilege host, and we have also the VMware service, the VM tool ST, and we have the other two here. Now, apparently, guys. What happened here is I tried with many of these, but the one that worked is this one, VM tools. So what I did, I uploaded Netcat, a copy of Netcat to the machine. So why I'm doing this? Because basically I want to change the binary path. I want to change the binary that the service is using. Instead of using VM tools, it's going to use my binary. Now why this happens? Because I am part of the server operators group which can change and manipulate services. So I uploaded a copy of Netcat. Make sure to put Netcat or to include the complete path on your local machine to be able to upload Netcat using evil WinRM. Now after this has been uploaded, this is the command where we can change the service binary path. So we use the responsible executable config and we mentioned the service name. Now the service name is VM Tools. This is the service name, okay, that I chose. And here, binary path equal. I specified the full path to the binary I want to use. So it's going to be Netcat. And since Netcat needs arguments to run, I use dash ECMD, and then I connect to my machine on port 4545. As you can see, I was able to change the binary path. The next step is to stop and start the service. So this worked, but with a little hiccup. As you can see here, guys, after I got the shell, I listened on port 4505, and then I got the, the access. What happened after a while, after a couple seconds, I lost access. As you can see, it wasn't stable, because as you can see, the service did not respond to the start or control request in a timely fashion. So it was a timeout. Now, it, when, when there is a timeout in a running service, it's going to kill the process that is running the binary. Eventually, it's going to kill the netcat. That's why uh, the, the shell stopped. 
To work around this, we have to run netcat as part of the command line. So what I did here, I changed again the binary path to include CMD. So in case the service timed out, okay, we have still an active process running. So I just included the path to CMD and slash C, and then again the path to netcat along with the command to connect to my machine. And again, I received a shell. Although there was a timeout here, as you can see, guys, but still I am maintaining the connection. Let's see if this is correct. <laughs> oh my. And indeed, I am the net authority system. And then you can delete the root flag. So that was it, guys, for the return machine. Let's go back to the track. Now, there is one last thing. Take a look at this challenge, line. Now, line was supposed, I was supposed to do line today. But apparently, I wasn't able to get this to work. So, line here is a machine. It's not a machine. If you start the instance, it will give you an IP on port. So apparently, here the description says, we found an LPD protocol implementation running on network printer. Can you help auditing the service? So, I got stuck on this, guys. If you have any comment on this challenge, kindly let me know in the video comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.